What's up guys, I'm going to unbox and review this new Netgear Nighthawk RS300, it's a Wi-Fi 7 system, this one's tri-band. So we got a quick start guide in two different languages, gives us some info on the back right here. Comes with a 30 day trial of Netgear Armor, contact us if you need help. We've got the power supply, it's 42 watts of power, it is 100 to 240 volts. And we got an Ethernet cable, the category is not specified. So we got the LED indicators, we got the sync WPS button, we got the LED on and off button. We got a little QR code that you could scan to connect to this that I'm hiding. We got some vents up on top. We have a factory reset right here. We got the power on and off. The top two are gigabit ports. The next two are 2.5 gigabit ports. We got a USB 3.0 and we got 2.5 gigabit port right here that your modem would connect to. We got the power port and this can be wall mounted if you get the correct accessory from it. So I set up the Nighthawk as my main router and in order to get all my devices to connect to it I used my same SSID which is your Wi-Fi name and password and they're both case sensitive and all my devices connected to it no issues whatsoever. I did all my speed test range tests, I have all those numbers right here. I tested with the following Wi-Fi 7 devices. I also have the iPhone 16 Pro Max which is a Wi-Fi 7 device however I can't get those crazy fast Wi-Fi 7 speeds out of this one. Still very, very fast, but not as fast as these two. And in fact, in a separate video, I've compared the Wi-Fi 7 speed test between these two devices. And there's a pretty big difference with the OnePlus definitely taking the lead. I also recently got the S25 Ultra by Samsung, and I will be doing a speed test on that one as well. Uh, comparing the phones to each other. So if you guys are interested, links below. I'll also put product links below. So let's start off with the internet speed test. Now, as you guys already know, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds. For me, that would be five gigabits per second upload and download, unless of course the router itself can't go that fast, which in my case, this router is capped to 2.5 gigabit speeds. So when my five gigabit connection goes in, I get capped to 2.5, but luckily there's more than one 2.5 gigabit port, so I could come out at 2.5 and keep those 2.5 gigabit speeds. By the way, I should mention with the ethernet connected device, I am able to get to those 2.5 gigabit speeds, both upload and download, no issues whatsoever with this router. With the Wi-Fi devices, that's typically a different story. They usually can't go as fast. So in this case, we got 2.1 down and almost, almost 2.1 up, which is very, very fast on an internet speed test, which can vary at times. Now, because of that, I like to do a local speed test where I make my computer into the server and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer. And what this does is it isolates the router. So I'm no longer relying my ISP, which is the internet, my internet service provider, nor the public speed test server, which can be busy at times as well. So looking at the Wi-Fi speeds, I mean, we are literally like a hair away from 2.5 gigabits on the download, practically there. And on the upload, not quite as close, but still absurdly, absurdly close. I mean, we're literally just capping out on a Wi-Fi 7 device, which is phenomenal. Next, we get into range test. Now, range will vary drastically by location. Literally, if you have more obstructions, if you have concrete walls, if you're in between floors, whatever it is, the more obstructions you have, typically, the less range you're gonna get. So in my case, at 20 feet away inside my place, I pretty much got the same download speeds and slightly slower upload speeds, but still absurdly fast. At 50 feet outside, I got absurdly fast download speeds. Obviously a big drop in the upload, but still getting very, very fast speeds overall. And then at 100 feet across the street, this is when obviously the speeds are both dropping both in the download and upload section, but still very, very usable speeds. Now for setup and configuration, use the Nighthawk app, which is a very simplified app, both on the iOS, it's available, I should say, both on iOS and on Android. And the goal is to be really clean and simple. So there's not a lot of options there. It's basically like what devices are connected, you could basically see your Wi-Fi name, you could set up a guest Wi-Fi, you could do an internet speed test, you could set up parental controls, the neck your armor is there for the trial version if you decide to keep it and get the subscription, that would be there as well. Um, and you could set up some reports and do some updating of the firmware. So that's pretty much the gist of the app. Now when you get to the browser interface, I should also mention that technically you don't even need the Nighthawk app, you could just set it up with the browser interface. Now Netgear does recommend the Nighthawk app, but technically it's not needed. Um, you could set it up with that. And once you set it up, pretty much all the info that's on the Nighthawk app, all, that, all those settings are available on the browser interface and more. 
You can also set up, you can run the router in router mode or access point mode if you wanted to. You could set up your USB if you want to share a drive among your network. Don't expect that to be crazy fast or anything, but that is an option that you can do. Uh, you could set up VPN if you want to. You could change the DHCP list. You could set a schedule for the Wi-Fi. You could store a configuration and reload it. You can update the firmware. There's basically a lot more things in addition to the Nighthawk app that you can do. Granted, you can update the firmware in the Nighthawk app as well. But yeah, if you want to tinker with it, night, the browser interface is definitely the way to go. So is it worth getting the Nighthawk RS300? Well, I would say it depends on your specific situation. So if you have internet speeds of up to 2.5 gigabits, and you're planning on placing this kind of centrally as a standalone router, this is an excellent choice. It got really good speeds. In fact, that was the most impressive part that the speeds overall were really good and the range was really good. So overall, from a performance aspect, that's kind of the best thing about this router. You also could tinker with some options if you go to the browser interface and stuff, but really that was the main thing that I liked. I also like the fact that you have three of those 2.5 gigabit ports, which is another plus right there. So if you guys enjoyed this video, smash that subscribe button. I will be comparing this to the RS200. Uh, this is the 300 obviously, the 5.6 and the 700 as well. So it will be a 5 night Nighthawk router comparison video. So subscribe if you guys haven't already. And let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. Are you guys planning on getting one? Do you have one? What do you think about it? And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.